Hi guys, welcome to this video on the cross bridge cycle. The cross bridge cycle is a fundamental part of sliding filament theory and without understanding this you can't really understand the theory as a whole. Now sliding filament theory is a way of explaining how muscles contract. Um, so let's get into it. So the first thing that we need to know is the basic structure of the sarcomere itself. So the sarcomere is a subunit of the muscle cell and each muscle is made up of loads and loads of muscle cells and um, muscle fibers combined together in fascicles and so on. But down at the microscopic level, we have what's known as a sarcomere and the sarcomere is laid end to end across the entire length of the cell. And there may be several thousand uh, sarcomeres per muscle cell, depending on how long that muscle cell is. And you can see on the screen now that um, the sarcomere is made up of a series of proteins uh, in the form of filaments. So on the screen now, the, the blue lines represent what are known as actin filaments. They're, they're thin filaments um, and they are attached to either side of the sarcomere to what's known as the Z line. So the Z line is the anchoring point of the actin filaments which then extend from the Z line into the center of the sarcomere. But that's not the only, filaments, uh, the only filament that's there. There is also in between the actin thin filaments, there are also myosin filaments. And the myosin filaments are about twice as thick as the actin filaments. And so we refer to those sometimes as the thick filaments. So we've got thin filaments, that's actin filaments, and we've got the thick filaments, which is the myosin filaments and the myosin is also attached um, to the Z lines uh, by another protein filament known as titan. titan. Now es essentially and simply what happens in muscle contraction is this sarcomere is structured in such a way that when muscle contraction occurs the Z lines are being pulled closer together. So the two Z lines, the black lines that you can see on the screen will move closer together and close the gap uh, in the center of the sarcomere. So the myosin filament itself doesn't move, but the myosin filament reaches up and pulls the thin filament towards the center line of the sarcomere. Now that center line is known as the M line. So M, I remember that as being M for middle. So the M line is in the center of the sarcomere. The Z lines are the bounds of the sarcomere. And when the myosin and the actin filaments slide past one another, the Z lines are pulled towards the center of the sarcomere. Now, if you imagine you've got several thousand sarcomeres laid end to end and each one is pulling towards the center, each sarcomere is pulling towards its M line, then the overall impact along the entire muscle cell is going to be that the whole muscle itself contracts and gets shorter and that's exactly what we want to achieve through mus muscular contraction through muscle contraction so a concentric contraction where the muscle is contracting and getting shorter is achieved by the shortening of the sarcomere so let's zoom into this section here where we can see just one actin filament and one myosin filament so we can get an understanding of what's happening uh, just between these two filaments and then in our minds we can expand this out uh, to the rest of the sarcomere and thereby the rest of the muscle cell. Let's zoom in. So having zoomed in, what we can see is we can see the actin thin filament at the top, the myosin thick filament at the bottom and don't forget that the M line is towards the is, is the center. So the M line is towards the left. Um, it's towards the center of the sarcomere. Now let's get rid of the, the blue and the red and look at in a little bit more specific detail what the actual structure of the actin and myosin filaments looks like. So here we have the actin filament and we also have the myosin filament. We'll talk about the actin first and we'll come to the myosin in just a moment. So the actin filament you'll notice has on top of it or around it two other key proteins, two other key proteins. And those proteins are called tropomyosin, tropomyosin and troponin, tropomyosin and troponin. 
Now, tropomyosin runs the length of the filament and troponin appears at various points along the filament and troponin is attached to tropomyosin so that when troponin moves and I'll explain how it moves in just a moment when troponin moves it also moves tropomyosin as well now before we get to exactly what's happening here um, think about how muscle contraction is innovated you'll remember that the nervous system sends electrical impulses stimulating the motor neuron um, and those electrical impulses arrive at the motor unit which is made up of several muscle fibers depending on the size and the function of the muscle and that electrical impulse passes through the muscle tissue and if it's sufficiently strong or frequent electrical impulse it will cause a contraction of the fibers in the motor unit now if you want to go back to the video on the all or non law for more details you can do that and find out exactly how that happens but what's most important in terms of the cross bridge cycle the most important thing to realize the consequence of that electrical impulse arriving at the muscle as far as the cross bridge cycle is concerned is that it causes calcium ions calcium ions to flood from the network of tubes around the outside of the muscle cell into the fluid contained within the muscle cell so the network of tubes around or the, uh, around the outside of the muscle cell is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum the sarcoplasmic reticulum and it's full of calcium ions and when an electrical impulse arrives at the sarcoplasmic reticulum it releases those calcium ions into the muscle cell itself so the sarcoplasmic reticulum releases calcium ions into the muscle cell where they then float around ready to do their work the fluid into which they're released the fluid that's around the filaments that we've got on screen now that fluid is called the sarcoplasm so we've now got these calcium ions floating around in the sarcoplasm and once they're in the sarcoplasm these calcium ions shown here as little circles in, in green on the screen these calcium ions bind to the troponin proteins they bind to the troponin proteins and when something binds to a protein it usually does so in order to change its shape so when calcium ions bind to the troponin proteins they change the troponin shape and the troponin pulls on the tropomyosin and moves the tropomyosin away from its resting position and so we can see now that the tropomyosin has been moved off these black dots on the actin filament and the black dots represent binding sites what are called binding sites and that'll be relevant in just a moment so the calcium ions after the electrical impulses arrived at the muscle cell the calcium ions have been released into the sarcoplasm into the muscle cell and have bound with the troponin and since they've bound with the troponin the troponin has changed shape and pulled the tropomyosin off the binding sites so whereas the binding sites had previously been covered up then they are now uncovered now at the same time as the calcium ions are flooding into the muscle cells and attaching to the troponin the heads of the myosin filaments the pink ones the red ones that you can see at the bottom they are also being prepared to bind with the actin filament and in order to create movement as we've said already we need to move the actin filament towards the m line and the myosin heads are being prepared to bind with actin to reach up attach themselves to the binding sites on the actin fibers and drag the actin fiber towards the m line in the center of the sarcomere so how is the myosin head actually being prepared well the myosin head needs to be stocked with energy for this movement and the energy comes 
from the breakdown of ATP, which is also present in the sarcoplasm in that cellular fluid. And that ATP molecule then attaches to the myosin head and while attached to the myosin head is broken down or hydrolyzed to leave ADP and a phosphate ion on the myosin head as well as the energy that's briefly stored in the myosin head itself. Now, if you want to get into that in a little bit more detail, the breakdown of ATP, um, you can go and see the video on the ATP um, breakdown um, in the energy system section. Uh, I'll put a link to that um, in the video. But what's happening here is the ATP, adenosine triphosphate, that's used for energy in the in the muscles and in, in all tissues is being broken down. One of the phosphates is being released from ATP. It's still there on the myosin head, but it's been broken apart. And now we have ADP and the phosphate attached to the myosin head, plus the energy that's being released from the hydrolysis, the breaking down of ATP. So there's energy now in the myosin head ready to do some work that we need it to do. The phosphates that have been produced from the breakdown of ATP into ADP are then released from the myosin head. And the myosin head now, having released the phosphate, it now reaches up to bind onto the binding sites on the actin molecule. Now this is why those binding sites needed to be uncovered. So the role of the calcium was to, re to remove the tropomyosin from the binding sites so that the myosin head, now stocked with energy from breaking down ATP, can attach itself to the binding site on the actin, creating a cross bridge. So you can see now that there's a bridge between the myosin and the actin, and that is where we get the term the cross bridge cycle from. That's where the name of this whole process comes from, because the myosin is bridging across to the actin, ready to move it towards the M line. So the energy that now we've got stored in the myosin head is put to work and it drives the myosin head into a new position whilst attached to the actin filament. And so in doing so, it moves the actin, in fil actin filament towards the M line. As this happens, the ADP is broken off. Now, this movement of the, of the myosin head has its own name. This is part of the crossbridge cycle. But the movement of the myosin head, as it's attached to the actin and is pushing the actin or pulling the actin towards the M line, this is known as the power stroke. The power stroke. So we've broken down the ATP on the myosin head. We've ejected the phosphate ion attached to the binding site and in as the ADP is released the energy that's being created from breaking down the ATP is now used as part of the power stroke to move the actin filament closer to the M line and in doing so of course pulling the Z lines closer together. So this being replicated across the entire muscle cell the Z lines being pulled closer together. This happening hundreds of thousands of times within the muscle cell, these power strokes. That is how we shorten the overall muscle length. Now at this point, and when a new ATP molecule is available in the sarcoplasmic, in the sarcoplasm, the myosin head will prefer to bind to a, an ATP molecule versus binding to the binding sites on the actin filament. So an ATP molecule will bind to the myosin head and break away the cross bridge. So as a result of this myosin head now binding to, binding to ATP, the cross bridge between the actin and the myosin is now being broken. And so there's the opportunity now for the cycle to repeat itself. So now we have this ATP attached to the myosin head, it's going to break down. 
and it's going to break down into ADP and a phosphate ion. And so now again, there's energy stored in the myosin head that can be used for the next power stroke. So this replicates over and over and over and over with all these myosin heads reaching up, attaching themselves to the actin, moving the actin towards the M line, provided there are these two things that are absolutely key to the crossbridge cycle, the calcium ions and the supply of adenosine triphosphate. So in summary, the four main steps are there is cross bridge formation where the myosin head attaches to the actin. Then there is the power stroke with the energy that's been made available from the breakdown of ATP. Then a new ATP arrives and detaches the myosin head so that there's cross bridge detachment. Then the myosin is reactivated by the breakdown of ATP and provided there's calcium there and the binding sites are available then the myosin head will create another cross bridge. So there are two key things just to reiterate as we finish two key things to maintain the cycle of muscle contraction. The cycle continues as long as there is sufficient calcium and ATP in the sarcoplasm. So as far as calcium is concerned, as long as that continues to be pumped into the muscle cell, pumped into the sarcoplasm, the troponin will continue to bind with the calcium, move the tropomyosin and keep the binding sites of the actin available for cross bridging. So in order to maintain the calcium levels, there, require, there is required a continued stimulation of the motor neuron by the nervous system. So as long as those electrical impulses are still being sent to the muscle from the nervous system, the calcium will continue uh, to flow into and be present within the sarcoplasm so that the binding sites can be revealed ready for the myosin heads to attach to. The frequency and the intensity of those electrical impulses will affect the volume of calcium and therefore the strength of the muscular contraction. But we'll think about that in another video. The second requirement, of course, is this supply of ATP, which is required to break down to reactivate the myosin head. If there is a continued supply of ATP, then the myosin heads can repeatedly detach be hydrolyzed and store the energy required for the power stroke. So the supply of ATP is absolutely essential and obviously it's dependent on other factors, particularly the efficiency of the body's energy systems in resynthesizing that ATP through the aerobic and anaerobic pathways. And you can go and watch the energy system videos that explain that in much more detail than we can do uh, just at the moment. So in summary, cross bridge formation, followed by power stroke, followed by cross bridge detachment, followed by the reactivation of the myosin head. All of this cycle will continue provided there's sufficient calcium ions and sufficient ATP in the sarcoplasm. Well, I hope that video has been helpful. I hope that's explained as clearly um, as you need it to be explained. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave some comments in the descriptions. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and I'll see you in the next video. Take care for now.